Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. My name is John Sign. I'm a DJ and producer, also a daily vlogger. And I've been showing you in the past my touring life, my in the studio music production life and playing gigs, really wild ones. And a lot of people have been asking me to do a full DJ tutorial. So that's exactly what's coming up next. First up, a very simple definition of DJing. It is taking music that already exists and changing it in a way that it is pleasing for a crowd. And while we're already at it, a DJ is someone that is doing all of this. That's like the main focus, but there are more tasks for DJ, for example, to promote himself, having an artist's name, having a style, making sure he plays in clubs and maybe eventually even producing to get more gigs by releasing music. Next up is the equipment. You definitely need two sources to actually be able to play music. Here in this case, I have the Pioneer CDJ 2000 Nexus. Unfortunately, just the Nexus 1. There is already version 2 available. And in the middle is the DJM 900 Nexus. It's a mixer to get those two sources into the mixer, mix them, twist them, change them, and then get them out to speakers. Very important, having speakers to actually be able to hear the music. And then you will, of course, need headphones. Phones. Where are my headphones? These right here are the Sennheiser HD 25. I just love those headphones because they're very lightweight. By the way, if you're interested in any of the equipment, it's all linked down below in the description. And you will need these headphones to be able to listen to the song that is not playing to make sure it's the right song, that you get the right spot, and also make sure to test the beat matching before you actually do the transition. A lot of DJs don't really actually anymore need headphones because those CDJs do everything for you. It's by far the simplest way of DJing because they're actually so automated. You could just use the sync button and it will do everything for you, but that's not what I want to teach you. I want to show you how to actually DJ with no matter what equipment you have. And of course you will need music. In my case, two USB sticks. I have all of my music on here, prepared with Recordbox. That's a software by Pioneer to analyze it, get the BPM, the waveform, and set cue points in advance before actually DJing. But I started, as you know, just with vinyl. That's my vinyl connection. That's one of my very old record players. Here, it's the same principle. You have one source of music, the record, Music's going through the needle, through the arm, through the cable, into the mixer. That's a really old battle mixer, a two-channel mixer. And here you can crossfade or line fade between two songs. So it doesn't really matter what equipment you use. It basically all works the same. Two sources of music and making sure to mix them together. So let's actually get into the how to mix part. So let's start to actually just get some music out there. First USB stick goes in here then you select a source for me it's a usb stick but you could also use link link is very interesting you can link this one cdj with the other one so you just need here a usb stick or any other source and you can just get it from the other one this is very handy if you play with two persons record box is djing with the laptop and the record box software sd card is actually this slot right here but i've never seen someone actually dj with an sd card and disc is for the CDs, but I also haven't seen anyone DJ with CDs for the past five years. It's just too much trouble and hustle to burn them. So for me, just pressing USB, it then asks me if I want to load my settings. Yes, I want to load my settings. And it then shows me here all of the artists in order. And I can just hit this knob here, select a song, and it will then play. The back button gets you back. You can go even further back than artist and select album, tracks, playlist, history, and even search for your songs. You can mark a track and put it into your tag list. You can get info to any song and also here get into the menu and utility. So I will just select a song by my favorite artist. Where is he? There he is. Maybe one of the older songs to lose. It now loaded the song, it doesn't play it. And you can see right here, the cue and the play is blinking. This means it's ready to be played. You could just now hit the cue button and it's playing the song for you. Once you let it go, 
it jumps back to the cue point. That's why the cue point is called cue point. That's why this button is called cue. So it will, whenever you hit it, play from that point, and whenever you let it go, jump back to that point. If you hit the play pause button, it will actually just play the song and pause it. And as you can hear, when it pauses it, it's playing that one single frame the entire time. This way you can move around with the jog wheel and try to find a spot where you want to set the next cue point or a new cue point. So for example, I've now selected this point. Now I could hit the cue. And now the song doesn't start at the beginning, at the first cue point, it starts at the new cue point. It's very important to know how to set cue points. You could now also save the cue points to the hot cue buttons and recall them whenever you want to at that same exact spot. But in most cases, the CDJs, they automatically find the very first cue point. You could also actually set them in the software before you go to the gig if you don't have the CDJs. So while the other song is playing, I have this song ready on my headphone. With this ear, I'm listening to what everyone else is listening. I have here 128 BPM on this song. BPM means beats per minute. That's how many times you hear a beat within one minute. It's the tempo of the song and you have to match the tempos between both tracks to actually make them sync. So just imagine my finger being the songs. You have here one, two, three, four beats and you have to make them the same speed. If you slow it down, the distance between the beats gets bigger. If you speed it up, the distance is smaller. So you have to get them to the same speed to actually make them match. If one of them is faster or slower, it will sound horrible, believe me. It sounds really, really terrible. If you can't beat match, please don't DJ in front of people. It's just, it just irritates everyone. You're dancing like one, two, three, four, and then there's like, it, it just doesn't work. But you're here to actually learn it. So let's get into the beat matching process with the CDJs. Works with every other software the same. Also works with the vinyls the same. There it's just harder because you don't have a display that shows you the BPM. So you have to do it more by ear, which involves more training, a whole lot more training because you have to hear which of the two songs is faster or slower and adjust it with the speed fader accordingly to make the match. Let me actually run you through this entire process in, in, in a first perspective kind of point. I hope you will get it. It's hard to, to show it to you on video because while the music is playing talking it just doesn't work but I will try my best. Okay that's the song playing to all of the people. You can see it already passed the middle point. It's playing at 126 BPM. And I usually wait up to this point right here. Let me zoom it in. Here, you can see it. There's like a gap in the last third of the song or last quarter or fifth that transitions from the actual song to the outro of the song. Because as you know, most club tracks are made by producers that have the DJs in mind. So they make sure there are 15 or 30 seconds at least of an intro, outro, where it's easy to mix, where you don't have chords or melodic parts going on no vocals, usually just like kick, clap. So I've stopped it right here at the beginning of the outro, just, just to be able to stop it here and to show you what I'm doing in the meantime leading up to this point. In the meantime on this player I've set my cue point, if it isn't set automatically it's the very first kick of the song, whenever I press Q I can hear it. I also adjust the BPM. Usually I never use the BPM display here because it's never really accurate. I do it by listening, but we definitely have to slow it down to 126 to make it match to the other song. So now both have the same speed. Then it's all about waiting for the right point in time. Still queuing. I usually do it with my feet, the counting. One, two, three, four, one. And they're both synced. Now this one is running, the other one as well, the outro of this one with the intro of this one and you can hear both of them at the same time and if you do it correctly it should sound nice. The huge advantage of the CDJs once they are locked, once the BPM is right you don't have to do anything anymore. With the old trusted record players they were not perfect depending on the the weight of the record the texture of it and and like the 
I don't know what it's called in English, but in German it's Gleichlaufschwankung. That means the amount it differs in spinning over one minute. It's like, I think, 0.25%. So you had to adjust it with your finger and push the record. That's the typical DJ move we all know. With the CDJs, you can do the same thing if it ever happens that they are not in sync anymore. You can just push this a little bit and get it back into sync. Okay, both the songs are now not synced. It sounds really awkward because now you have a song that is like kind of double the tempo because there are more hits in between. Sounds really bad. So let's just push this one slower. So this right here is very typical. They are close to each other. But not perfect. Now they're again in sync. One, two, three, four. Now let's make one of them again faster. Now they're drifting apart. You can hear the kicks twice behind each other. Getting worse. Now it's in between, like one of the songs is playing between the other one. No one could ever dance to this. I think that's pretty simple, especially with the CDJs. If you just rent them for maybe one or two days, I'm pretty sure you can train that, getting those transitions right. The theory behind it is pretty easy. You just sync them up, overlap them. If you know anything about music, if you ever had piano lessons, you know exactly how to, to put them on top. You always count to four and make sure that the ones are on top of each other, claps and snares on top of each other. This way it will just sound nice and smooth. But matching those two songs is not everything because you have still this huge mixer in the middle. It makes sure that you can mix between both sources. You have usually one of the CDJs on one of the channels, the other one on the other one. There are four channels on this mixer, so two aren't used. You could hook up more CDJs or record players or your iPod or whatever you want. Here in this case on channel one, this CDJ, channel two, the other one. And after the moment I've, I've queued in the next song, I start using the mixer because only I can hear both songs at the same time. I have to make sure everyone else also can hear both and the transition in between. And for that, I need the mixer. So let's switch again to the first person view quick overview we have here the crossfader a and b you can switch between both if you set it up correctly i never ever use the crossfader for me it's usually always disabled to disable it i just put these here on through you could also put them on a and b to use the crossfader again the light feathers are for the volume so we still got here this one song in the loop And the other one on this channel. Let's see if they're still both synced. Yeah, almost. Now they're both synced again. And then once both of them are synced and the one playing to the people, the loud one, playing you just mix in the other one and slowly fade out the other one that's the most basic transition fading in one song fading out the other one while retaining the beat matching and having it accurate playing very important that's the easiest if you know how to do this you can dj the entire night no one will ever complain once you got that the next technique would be to actually do the same just a little bit more refined because you can not only control the volume of both songs you can also control the EQing. So what I love to do is getting rid of the bass on the song that is playing loud to the people. I just kill it and turn the bass and the volume of the new song in. Sometimes I leave a gap and just turn it all of a sudden in so that the people feel the bass kicking in again. Because making the transitions too smooth, and I don't mean the beat matching, it has to be smooth, but the transition, like the bass and everything, it's sometimes more exciting if it just kicks in. People just love that on a dance floor. Sometimes you can just kill the bass for four bars, kick it back in again and get the people really excited. There's of course a lot more advanced stuff you can do. For example, you can use the sound color effects. You select them here and control them with these knobs. When they're in the middle position, they're off. And then you can turn them down or up. For example, the filter to filter a song out or in. 
you can use the dub echo it's a really cool effect the space is pretty clear you just add reverb to it you could kill the bass on the song add a ton of reverb and kill it again but you should actually do it simultaneously but i have just one hand at the moment that's the one downside of vlogging one hand is always holding the camera the very first knob here the gray one is also really important that's the input gain so if a song is too quiet or too loud you adjust it actually here you have the metering here so for example in this case this one song here is quieter a little bit than the other one but that's mainly due to here having way less space so let's turn it up again and you can actually see that this song is louder than the other one so you turn it down again now they should be the same loudness that's actually something i forgot to mention at the very beginning first checking the loudness of both songs make them equally loud within the headphones testing one the other or using the metering then getting the beats the tempo right then the transition and then doing all of this again, again, and again. I think that's already it for today's vlog. I wanted really to concentrate onto the DJing part and it's like the basic part, I think, watching this video and training for a couple of hours, you will be able to play at any club and do a decent job. If you want to get really good, it's about experience. I'm doing this already for over 15 years playing in clubs. You will learn more transitions. You will gain a lot more experience, what to play to which kind of crowd, what to play in which club how to get gigs and all these things. Most of them I also already covered here on this channel. So if you're interested, go check out my other videos. I will also link one up at the end of this one that is DJ related. If you have any questions about DJing, let me know. I will try and answer all of them. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe. For me, it's now time to actually take care of the main reason why I have to see DJs here in my studio. I'm recording a mix for a radio station. It's this one right here. I used to work for them. Also made like shows with Robin Schulz and a lot of other famous people. I actually don't really like them because they never paid me for my show. That's a whole nother story. But now the boss changed and he's nice and he wants to make up for it. So getting some good promotion German-wide on the radio. That's good. Can't shake the feeling